Hello, welcome to Dungeon Draws Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. So we're going to be grinding in, like, uh, Digimon World 3 while I'm reviewing Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, which came out in 1996, directed by Joe Chappelle, who worked on The Wire, and he did, um, oh shit, what was other movies he did? Uh, he did um, Phantoms with uh, B- Ben Affleck, right? And like he did a bunch of random movies, right? So th- this movie, I was supposed to review this movie last year, but I couldn't find it anywhere, right? And it was during the um, the lockdown, right? So I couldn't go and pick it up. Actually, maybe I could have. I can't remember. I think maybe the lockdown was done at that point. I don't know. So, like, the, yeah, the movie stars Donald Pheasants as Dr. Loomis. Uh, this is, like, this is his final role, uh, f- sorry, final performance as the Dr. Loomis character. He died during filming, so they had to change the ending of the film, which the movie is an hour and 27 minutes, barely, like, theatrical length, right? Which, that's... Like, theatrical link is, what, like, 90 minutes? That's, like, only 87, right? Uh, and the movie also stars Paul Rudd as Tommy Doyle, Marion Hagen as Carrie Strode, Mitchell Ryan as Dr. Wynn, Dr. Wynn, Kim Darby from True Grit and Alone in the Dark, sorry, Afraid in the Dark, is in the movie as Deborah Strode, and you have Keep. Bogart as Tim Strode, Mariah O'Brien as Beth, Leo Getter as Barry Sims, and um, that, that's pretty much all the important characters in the film. So the move, this movie is pretty. Uh, it's a, it's definitely, it's pretty cool. It's definitely a product of its time, though. Like, like there's like in the movie, it has this like X Files feel to it. <laughs> And there's, like, grunge music playing in the background at times in the movie. Which I thought it was Alice, Alice in Chains' Man in the Box. But it's not. It's some other fucking grunge song. Which they totally stole the riff. The, the intro riff of the of um, Man in the Box. And just use it for the entire song. If they play the song... And it's entirely in the background at the back at the end of the film, right? Which is like, what the fuck? Oh my god, right? So the, the the story for this movie it starts off really weird, where they have they they recasted um, uh, the Jamie Lloyd character. Sorry, the not Jamie Lloyd. Uh, yeah, Jamie Lloyd character who was played by Daniel Harris, right? Who is, um, who's played by, like, a different actress who's, uh, J.C. Brandy, which it was Daniel Harris in the Halloween 4 and 5, which this movie is the climax with, with that whole trilogy, so you're probably going to want to watch Halloween 4 and 5. I just thought they were decent flicks, to be honest. Kind of like this one. This this one has cool stuff in it. So the movie starts off with uh, uh, Jamie Lloyd's character strapped to like a gurney, like in in labor, right, and about to give birth, and like you have th- all this weird candles and guys in robes and shit, right? She gives birth to the baby, and the doctors hand it off to these guys. To these cult guys, and you see the 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 one the 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 black the guy in black character from the previous film, who went on like you know a murder spree in the in the uh, police station right at the end of the last film right. He and like you know um, they put some like. They do, like, this, like, almost pagan, like, satanic ritual where they put, like, this rune on the, on the baby, right? And, like, one of the nurses, uh, uh, takes the baby, gives it to 
Jamie and tells her, you need to get the hell out of here. Michael's coming, right? And Michael shows up, kills everybody. Ch ch chases Jamie Lloyd, right? And then, like, you know, while that's going on, you're getting reintroduced to, like, Tommy Doyle, who lives across the street from the uh, Myers house, who's, like, their relatives are living there, uh, who have no idea what happened there, except for the asshole alcoholic dad, right, in the film, right? Who, who's a, a abusive piece of shit, by the way. <laughs> oh, my God, right? So, like, yeah, you get, you, you, um, what happens is that, like, Jamie escapes with the baby, goes to the hospital, nobody's there, right, which is convenient, um, which, it, later on, it makes sense in the film why there's nobody there at the hospital, right, and, um, so, like, yeah, what happens is, uh, is Michael sh shows up there and kills Jamie Lloyd in the beginning of the movie, but she had him and her baby, who is found by Tommy Jar, uh, to not Tommy Jarvis. <laughs> that's the that's the guy from um, uh, Friday the Thirteenth, <laughs> right? Who's fo found by Tommy Doyle, right? Who takes the baby and like uh, brings it to like you know. Uh, br brings it to, like, um, uh, Dr. Loomis, who's, who's told by, like, an old colleague of his, who's, uh, to start working at the hospital again, right, where he meets, uh, Paul Rudd. While that's going on, you're getting introduced to, like, the new family that's living there, which is, like, um, which is the, the, which is, like, uh, Kim Darby, who's the grandmother, the asshole alcoholic fa uh, grandfather, Right, and, um, the two kids, or two adults who are in college but living at their parents' house, well, one is, like, um, uh, this mother, single mother who's in high school, has a six-year-old son, who, um, hears voices, and we see him, we see him, like, talking with the, um, the shape character, who who's, like, the guy from the previous film, right, who doesn't look as cool and as menacing, right, because he, that, and that, in the last movie, he had this, like, dark cowboy kind of look to him, here, like, he looks like, he looks like the fucking, <laughs> like, he looks like, uh, what's it called, the deep throat character from, like, the, those, like, um, Nixon fucking films, right, the, or parodies of that shit, right, so, like, yeah, he, um, the kid, uh, the kid has problems, he, he likes to draw, he's beco he's becoming almost like this second Michael Myers, where he's, like, drawing, like, uh, murdering his family, right, because, like, the, the dad in this movie is such an asshole, right, in the film, where you can't, you really can't blame him, but, like, why does, why does he want to kill his mom and his uncle, <laughs> well, his grandma and his uncle, right, uh, well, it's because the, uh, evil, like, you know, uh, the, the shape guy, which that's what they call him in the credits, the shape, right, which you find out who he is later on in the film, right, yeah, so, like, um, Tommy Doyle warns, um, w warns, like, the, the family there, but, like, Michael had already struck, so he, he hides the daughter, uh, the, the daughter and her six-year-old son, while that's going on, you also have a party, uh, a Halloween party, uh, Halloween party, a costume party, uh, where, like, the, the uncle and his girlfriend, Beth, who's friends with the, with, uh, Kara Strode, the, the single mother, is, like, um, having this, like, weird Halloween par party where they're, like, you know, they're, they're trying to take back Halloween from Michael Myers, and they have, like, some agenda, but the asshole, like, uh, DJ, uh, talk show guy on, who's in the, who's on, uh, the radio in the beginning of the movie is like, yeah, I don't want to hear any of this. I'm sick of hearing about this Michael Myers asshole, <laughs> which he gets killed and put in a fucking tree, right? And, like, when Tommy Doyle finds this kid under this tree, like, uh, 
acting super creepy, saying it's raining blood, it's raining blood, and, and he looks up and sees the DJ guy, right? And like, yeah, the you find out, yeah. Also later on in the film, like the cult people show up and they abduct everybody, right? And take and uh, take the the baby, right? And the and the the mother character because. Here's the thing. I, I'm going to have to spoil this. You find out that Michael... The reason why Michael Myers is evil, right? Because he was basically... He was infected by this cult with this evil spirit called the the Thorn. Which is part of some pagan ritual where they, they give this kid this rune symbol. Which makes him susceptible to being possessed by the Thorn. And he has to, like, kill his entire family. And that's why Michael is going after um, the Strodes and the and the baby, right? Because, you know, he has to kill his entire family, right? Which, does that mean extended cousins, too? Because he already killed, like, pretty much all of his close relatives, right? So, uh, yeah, in the end of the movie, uh, sorry to spoil it. Um, yeah, it's, it's just... I, it's just Paul Rudd with with a lead pipe at this hospital, and they they just inject like Michael Myers with this like with a bunch of anti locked. I think it was like like embalming fluid, right? Because they see this baby, this fetus in this like ring fluid, and they just inject him with it, and then beat Paul Rudd just beats him to death with the pipe. <laughs> With a pipe, which reminded me of something the goon would do. Uh, that that's a comic book character that I, w I was re reviewing goon comics uh, this month, right? So I I really like the movie, but the movie is boring at times, right? And the movie is super short, and I really liked the whole like you know, cause like in the beginning of the film, in the beginning of the film, you had people like. Calling into the DJ uh, radio station that Paul Rudd was listening to. Uh, and, like, you had, like, people calling and saying, like, it was the CIA, man. And, like, all this conspiracy stuff, which gave it this X-Files feel. Which was fucking awesome. But then, like, they didn't... They they kind of... They kind of got, got rid of that... Because, like, Michael... They, Michael is pretty much a supernatural entity in, the, in this film, right? And, like, they just they just beat him with lead pipe and shit. I heard it in the original cut, they were supposed to use magic and shit, runes, because there was, like, a scene in the... There's a previous scene in the movie where, like, Paul Rudd is explaining runes, runes to, like, the Marianne Hagen character and how they can do magic and shit, right? So, like, apparently in the movie, they were... They were the original move, movie was supposed to have that, but... But, like, um, Loomis' character died, so they had to fucking make up a fucking ending, right? Out of nowhere. Which, I don't know, I thought, which kind of a shame. I really enjoyed, I, actually, I didn't really enjoy the movie. I think the movie, the movie reminded me a lot of the first Silent Night, Deadly Night movie. Where there's a lot of cool ideas, but they don't really do any, enough with them, right? Like, if, you, if you're gonna have, like, a fu fucking, like, you know, uh, a movie where, like, you're gonna have, like, you know, this grunge, like, you know, X-Files feel, would have been nice if they had a cameo from w s any actor from the X-Files, or, or had, like, ru any, like, good fucking grunge music instead of this knockoff Alice in Chains shit that plays in the fucking movie, right? Which was, like, terrible. And this movie had, like, apparently, according to Bing, this movie had, like, a $5 million budget. <laughs> oh, fuck, that's not a lot. Uh, you would think they would, you know... You could probably get uh, David Duchovny for $5 million, <laughs> with a $5 million budget for just to make a cameo. Not give him $5 million, because, like, you know... He's a, he was a TV actor, but come on. But, yeah, I thought... Overall, I thought there was some cool scenes in the film like for all the people who complain about halloween kills how like 
Michael Myers was just acting like this juggernaut, like, psycho killer. That he wasn't, like, acting like this stalker boogeyman like he did in the original films. Here, Michael Myers, when he kills, he he, he, st he, st he stalks his victims beforehand and goes for stealth kills. It's not till the end of the movie where he's, like, you know, chasing people. But he, ch he chases people uh, slowly, right? I, I, I really, I, there's some cool things in the movie. I think I, I like this movie better than than um, the fifth Halloween movie, right? Which I gave like a 5 out of 10. I'm giving this one a 6 out of 10. <laughs> Which is like the sixth uh, Halloween movie, uh, movie. There's some cool things in the movie, but overall, like, you know, it, it is a little slow. And Paul Rudd's performance is not that great. But overall, I thought it was a, a decent movie, and I, I would recommend it. I would. All right, guys, that's it for this review. Uh, peace. All right. I don't know if I should. Should I keep the camera going? Uh, not really. Not really. All right.